first, I'm excited that Rabbi Robin lived through a two-day retreat. I don't know how rough the retreat was, but thank goodness she's here. And you know, we want to give her a, a get-out-of-art-free pass tonight so that she can go and, and rest up. Because we love her and we want to keep her around for a long, long, long time. So having said that, I am thrilled on the behalf of the Gallery of Light team, Jen and Linda and Enid, to introduce you to my friend and former colleague, um, retired teacher, or I'd like to say graduated teacher, Alice Goldhagen. Alice is a Miami native and we've known each other a long time. And she has had a fabulous opportunity that she made happen for herself. She has traveled extensively and has brought her camera with her wherever she goes. And she is going to take us on the trip that we wish we could take right now, this year. <laughs> but we know we can't even hardly ever go to even Publix. So yeah, there's that. So. I so appreciate that Alice is willing to share her travels with us tonight, and I hope that you will enjoy it so much, as much as Enid and I have, when we um, went through this with her and got to see exactly where she has been. So without further ado, happy and thrilled on behalf of Beth Orr and the Gallery of Light and our wonderful gallery team our president Mel Tennant, our fabulous rabbi Robin Fisher, to introduce you once again to Alice Goldhagen. Take it away, Alice. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And first of all, I would like to thank Rabbi Robin Fisher and Temple Beth Orr for giving me this opportunity. I'm going to start this evening talking about some of the solo expositions that I've had. Art Deco and Tour de France. The Miami Design Preservation League invited me to have an exposition on Art Deco. This photograph is an Art Deco doorway entrance that I took in Bordeaux. I'd like everybody to notice the symmetry, whatever you have on the left side, you have on the right side, which is one of the characteristics of Art Deco. It's one of the most beautiful doorway entrances that I've seen on my travels in France. It also serves as an advertisement for this person's work and trade. In the upper left-hand corner, you have the word ferronnerie, which in French, the French word, which means wrought iron. And on the right side, it says serrurerie, which uh, means a locksmith. I worked as an art educator for 35 years and would take my students to the Art Deco district on Miami Beach where they would draw the different Art Deco hotels. These drawings would go on display at various student expositions and also Art Deco weekend. Miami Design Preservation League several times gave me certificates for encouraging preservation and art appreciation. I'm now gonna continue on and talk about a few other expositions that I've had. On the left, I had the uh, wonderful opportunity to uh, have a show in France. Uh, this uh, exposition uh, took place in Saint Laurent de Var, which is very near Nice, where I was asked to exhibit photographs that I had taken in Italy. And uh, this, fo this uh, photograph here of the green umbrellas, I'm gonna be talking about it later on in the exposition. In the upper right-hand corner, Coral Gables Mediterranean Dreams, I exhibited photos from France and Italy and Coral Gables at, at the Coral Gables Museum, where I showed the architecture and decorative influences of these two countries and its influence on the architecture of Coral Gables. Last year, a little bit over uh, a year ago, I had a photo travels exposition at the Dave and Mary Alper JCC, which featured photographs of Italy, Israel, and France. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my uh, first medium, which was ceramics. 
uh, because my ceramic work has had a big influence on my photography. On the uh, left-hand side is a piece, a wheel thrown piece of Raku. And you can see the uh, patterns of the crackle glaze and uh, the uh, cover jar in the middle uh, is, is also made on the potter's wheel. And you can see the cobalt blue slip color is very important to me on the top and the bottom. And also this piece was fired in the salt glaze. And if you look at the top of the lid, you can see this textural orange peel, which that's what it's called when you do the salt glaze process, because it's similar to the texture of an orange. And you see that texture repeating on the bottom of the ceramic pot. On the right hand side, uh, this is a, a wall sculpture and it's a three, three dimensional tiles. And where you have the unglazed parts of the tile, for me, it's very textural. And then you've got the light blue and medium blue resin inserts. Who in here has been to France? Raise your hand and who would like to go? As I start my talk, I'm going to I'm going to first of all say that the following elements are very important to me when I take a photograph. Color, light, pattern, and texture. And I take photographs because of color, passion, and decoration. The photographs that I'm going to show in this presentation were taken in the summer, winter, and spring. And I'm gonna talk first of all about the Splendor du Soir, the previous slide. Okay, I took this in April and the sun was lighting up the lanterns, which is what attracted me. This picture photograph was taken on Place de la Concorde in the center of Paris. And you have on the left side, the patterns of the trees, the leaves are just starting to come out springtime. And in the distance is the Eiffel Tower. The next photograph, this is a uh, Citroën de Chevaux. Uh, which means uh, Citroën two horses. This is this car has become an iconic symbol in France. Uh, if you have one of these cars, for example, uh, in the summer in France, you are really considered cool and you are really in. Now this particular Citroën is a décapotable, which means it's a convertible. And um, it's clearly been repainted and for me, it's the flower power Citroen. Continuing on. After I leave Paris, I usually go to the south of France where I pick up a car, usually a 208 Peugeot and off I go. I create and plan all of my trips. Here we are down in the south at the port of Cassis, which is a beautiful, one of the most beautiful villages in France. It's on the Mediterranean, right next to Marseille. Can anybody tell me if they see any patterns in this photo? Okay, I see patterns in the buildings, in the mountains, in the boats. I see so many patterns. That's, that's exactly right. And you also have uh, in the background, the, the patterns of the forest and the trees and the mountains. And uh, I, in the upper right hand corner, uh, there is a chateau, which has become a bed and breakfast. And uh, where, from where I was standing taking this photograph, about a mile away, the vineyards start. 
similarly, this view that you see here, I have a restaurant that I really like in Cassis, and every time I go to Cassis, I'm there in the evening, and this is the this, this is the view that I have of Cassis. This is the beautiful village of Kukuron. It's north of Aix-en-Provence. Uh, you have in this photo the platan trees. And this part of the village, the center part of the village, there is a, you're right in front of a pond, or etang as the, is the word in French. And it really resembles, I took this in the summer, it really manifests the jo joie de vivre that you have, particularly in France and particularly in Provence in the summer. Joie de vivre meaning the art of appreciating and enjoying life. These two photos were both taken in the springtime. On the left, Entree au Paradis. And I took this in a very small Provençal village. You've got the patterns of the wisteria or glycine and also the patterns of the yellow flowers. It's a bed and breakfast. And on the right, the title is Guirlande de Glycine. This photograph has been published. There is a French company that makes reproduction French furniture. And this was in their catalog. And when you bought a piece of furniture, you received a postcard of this image. Uh, you've got a lot of movement in this photo. And uh, if everybody notices, the, the stone of the building is very textural, which uh, uh, reminds me a lot of my ceramic work. Valbone. Can someone tell me what materials were used to make this structural sculpture-like sculpture? Water bottles. You have, you, you do have water bottles. That's exactly right. Uh, wine bottles. Exactly. This uh, Valbonne is, in, is a village just off of, not that far from Nice. And um, it's Arriere Pays, as the French say, off the coast. And what we have here is a, it's called a Champagne Arisson Bouteille. It's made out of zinc, the structure part, and has prongs. And it's used, it was originally made in Champagne to draw, it's like a drying rack to dry the Champagne bottles. Here it is in the south of France, repurposed you could say recycled, repurposed, and it's in a different context and they're not using champagne bottles anymore. It's no longer in champagne. Uh, and you have the, but you have the clear bottles and, and blue bottles. For me, it was a cultural statement. Carousel de la Cité. This uh, carousel comes from Aix-en-Provence, which is one of Coral Gables' sister cities. I took the photograph in December. There is a long history of carousels in France. Uh, you have them in every large city in France, medium-sized city and also towns. The carousels come from the early jousting traditions in Europe. If you go, for example, in Paris, there's oh, there's oh, there's oh, there's twenty, at least twenty carousels, and there's also a carousel museum, the Fête Foraine. Rouen. I took this photograph in Normandy. It was um, this fragment of either a carousel, merry-go-round, or some type of amusement ride. There it was in a storefront. I'd never seen anything quite like this. And it, for me, it had a, uh, I liked the movement and color and it had a very happy feeling, which is very important to me. 
I have to take photos that are happy. Centers de Provence. One of my favorite cities to photograph is Aix-en-Provence. It's a wonderful, Aix is a wonderful walking city with beautiful doorway entrances, hotel particulier, which are mansions and beautiful fountains. Every day in Aix, they have different outdoor markets, which is where I took this photograph. And the, the color and the light and the repetition were very important to me. These two photos were taken at different markets in Provence. I wanna talk a few minutes about visiting a Provençal market. As many times as I have been to Provençal markets, for me, it's always like the first time. They're very unique. It's a very special experience with sights, colors, scents, perfumes, animation, and music. It's always best to start at around 9, 9.30 or so, or even earlier, and just walk the market and experience the experience. It's like a happening. On the left-hand side, I have, it's called Lavande and Paquet, and on the right-hand side, market in San Remy. Does anyone see any similarities of these two photos? Feel free to unmute yourself and speak right up, people. Right. Because I'm ready to jump in. I, I well, see the grid pattern. Exactly. Very good. Both, both, both of these fo photographs have rows in them. Uh, you, have, you have on the left-hand side, you have the homemade lavender sachets. Uh, and uh, on the right-hand side, you've got the baskets and rows, as well as the texture of the spices. Uh, as you, the color is very, really influenced me in taking both of these photographs. Heading to the southwest of France, the title of this photograph is called Ocean Door. I took it in the countryside near the town of beaumont Lomagne. I truly felt that I was in an ocean of sunflowers. Color and the texture of the sunflowers and the depth are the reasons why I took this photograph. Tournesol on Vendée. This photograph was taken on the uh, west side of France, and it really is a close-up of the sunflowers, and, and also as the sunflowers are going into the distance. The title of this photograph is called Cabanon. I take, when I go to uh, Provence, it's usually in the latter part of June when the lavender fields bloom. And I never, for me, seeing the lavender fields is, is like seeing the, them for the first time. I never get tired of them. The color is beautiful, lots of texture. And when, you, when you're in the lavender fields, I don't wanna leave them. You have a wonderful perfume and also particularly when uh, sometimes with the wind, there's a little bit of wind, you have the movement of the, of the lavender back and forth. You have, you have the texture of the vineyard and I wanna now talk about the cabinon. Uh, this is a storage structure used for wine utensils and um, different hardware used in the wine, tools used in the wine production. And sometimes in recent years, the cabin on, if, if they're big enough, they've been restored and converted into homes. 
but but you can see that the cabin on is very textural the stones in the building as well as the tiles on on the rooftop also for me uh, uh, very uh, influential in my in my ceramics and my photography Alice can I make a comment absolutely um, when you were asking about the texture I just think it's such an interesting contrast between the roughness of those uh, stones in the building and then that softness of the um, lavender. I just think it's a very beautiful contrast. I, I absolutely agree. And I also like the contrast between the lavender and the, and the green of, of the, of the uh, vineyard. The photograph on the left, the title is idyllic. It was taken on the island of Porquerol which is off the uh, coast of Toulon in the south of France. Uh, for me, it has a dreamy-like quality. You have the rose of the lavender, and you also have olive trees. And on the right, uh, these are lavender, dried lavender bouquets that were taken at the market. We're now going to leave France and move on to Italy. Has anybody here been to Italy? And would anybody like to go if you haven't been? Yes and yes. Okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I am gonna start talking about Italy uh, with photographs up in the Northwest part of Italy. And I'm gonna crisscross Italy all the way down to Sicily. The photo on the left, is, was taken in the in Portofino, which is in Liguria. It's one of the most beautiful ports in the world. And this photograph was in my Coral Gables Mediterranean Dreams exposition at the Coral Gables Museum. Uh, what I find very interesting here is if you look at the beautiful ochre buildings and the different orange colored buildings, we now in South Florida, many of our buildings and homes have these colors as well. The photograph on the right, Alicia and Giovanni, was taken in the beautiful village of Camogli. Camogli is two towns up from Portofino in Liguria, right on the coast, and it's about 20 minutes north of Genoa. This photograph was, and also when I took it, you can see in the foreground, there are the fishnets. It's, it's regarded as a fishing village. It's, it's known for its anchovy industry. So I took, it, I took the photograph in front of the fishnets because I felt it would add a textural quality to it. The, this photograph has been exhibited in France in my exposition in Saint Laurent du Var, where I was asked to exhibit my Italian photographs from Liguria. And it also was exhibited in Genoa and also, as coincidence has it in this, these two photos here, uh, Brown Castle. Brown Castle is located in Portofino, in the hills of Portofino, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. The title of this photograph, Umbrelli Verde, also taken in Camogli, green umbrellas. I like to take photographs of beach umbrellas. Uh, and in Italy, something that's very special, all the beaches have names and they all have color-coded umbrellas that are coordinated with that particular beach. This photo was exhibited uh, in France, in Saint Laurent de Bar, and also in uh, Genoa and Castello Brown. Continuing in Italy and crisscrossing over to Venice. Who can tell me what material these two sculptural like forms, what was the material used? Is it ivory? Alice, is it painted wood to look like chrome? That's, that's, a, very, that's a very good answer. 
Uh, what we have here are, the, these are hitches. They're made out of bronze and they are, they are used to secure the braided silk co cords that flank each side of the gondola. Every gondola, th these here are, are uh, mythological seahorses and every gondola will either have the seahorses or lions out of the, out, made out of, out of bronze. Now, I have a little story about this photograph. I was walking in Venice on my way to the Arsenale area when I came upon this gondola in the Campo Santa Maria Formosa. I was admiring the gondola and also what caught my eye was the blue boat in the background and the reflection of the blue boat on the water. I took the photograph and 20 seconds later, the blue boat left. For me, the blue boat and the reflection is a very important part of this photograph. So I clearly was in the right place at the right time. We have on the left, Rialto. This was taken off the Rialto Bridge. It's on the Grand Canal in Venice. And you see in front of you the various buildings from the Rialto area. On the right side, the title of this photograph is Barano. It's one of the three islands in the Venetian Lagoon. Uh, you Barano is a photographer's delight. All of the buildings are painted in beautiful, vibrant colors. And another similarity that it has to the photograph on the left is that it's on a canal and that the buildings are receding into the distance. The next photograph, the title is Contorno, which in Italian means vegetables. I love food, particularly Italian tomatoes and Italian tomato sauce. Just as I enjoy traveling, visiting markets in France, I love to visit the fruit and vegetable markets and photograph them in Italy. And as I mentioned, this was taken in Florence, for me, it has a, it's very dramatic because you, as you go into the distance, it becomes dark. And I like the contrast with the dark and the light. You also have the repetition of form with the tomatoes, the green peppers, and the multicolored peppers. Pitigliano. Continuing south, this is in southern Tuscany in the Marema region. When I left the auto route, it took two hours on small roads to get to Pitigliano. Pitigliano is a gastronomic region. It became known as the Little Jerusalem because in the early 1500s, Jews left Rome and move, some of them moved to Pitigliano in 1598, a synagogue was built. The synagogue and its complex has, have been restored several times. There, you can, if you go there today, there is a museum and there is a kosher bakery. You can visit the synagogue as well as there's several other rooms, including a mikvah. color you, and, um, and more umbrellas, more of the color-coded umbrellas. On the left, uh, this was taken on the island of Capri off, the, off of Naples on the Mediterranean. And for me, it doesn't get any more colorful than this with the greens and the reds of Italy. And once again, the color-coded umbrellas. On the right, on the opposite coast in Italy, uh, you have here these peppermint inspired umbrellas. This was taken on the Amalfi Drive in the town of Amalfi. And uh, for me, there was just a, just a lot of movement and patterns in this photo. Uh, we're in the region now continuing south in Puglia. 
The photograph on the left was taken, believe it or not, in the town of Castro. Both of these photographs uh, are near the port of Bari. And you have in the photograph on the left, you can see the black lava rock. There, there's, there is no sand on this beach. In order to get into the Adriatic, you need to go down the steps or they have ladders. And the, the green umbrellas match the color of the Adriatic. It's one of the most beautiful images that I've ever seen. On the right, Polignano Amare. You have the beach of Calapauda, which separates the north side of Polignano from the south side. And this particular beach on the Adriatic has sand, but you, everyone can see on the left and right the textures of the, of the rocks and the cliffs. On the right-hand side is the old part of Polignano, and uh, it has lots of narrow alleyways and meandering streets. Continuing on in, in Puglia, uh, this is a photograph of the Trulli. We, we are about 45 minutes from the coast from the previous two photos. The concentration of Trulli can be found mostly around the town of Cisternino. And these pool, pool these Trulli, uh, they are they, they're cre they come in clusters. You have like three or five or seven. And I wanna talk a little bit about the history. The tr truly came about in the late 1700s and people would live in them. The original truly had no mortar. They it was stone upon stone. And when the tax collector would come to town, the people would take the truly apart and all the tax collector would see were stones. And then when the tax collector left, they would put the truly back. They're conical stone structures. No two are alike. And they have a very sculptural quality. You, as I mentioned, you can find many of them in the Cisternino region and also the Valley de Tria. And I particularly like in this photo, the contrast of the Bougainvillea with the Truly. The, these are Truly for many years before I actually got to see them were very in influential in my ceramic work because I liked creating stone structures out of clay. We're now gonna go to the other coast back on the Mediterranean side, leaving the Adriatic. This is the uh, town of Tropea in Reggio Calabria. And you have here a Ciclo Motore, which is a three wheeled Italian service vehicle that's been designed to go, to go through alleys and small streets. What was interesting is that the Ciclo Motore here becomes the fruit and vegetable stand for at the market for this person. Tropea is very famous for its Rosso Cipolla, the red onions, which they ship all over Europe. And you have the garlands of the red peppers, the hot red chili peppers, the red onions, garlic and the textural baskets. In the upper left-hand corner, you see uh, there is a basket of oregano. These are all typical products of the region. We're now gonna leave the mainland of Italy and go to Panarea. Panarea is one of the several there are several islands off the coast of Sicily called the Aeolian Islands. Uh, some of the other islands have names. They are Salina, Stromboli. You might have heard of Stromboli because it has an active volcano, Lipardi. What 
attracted me to taking this photo was the contrast of the white building with the bougainvillea and the stone-like shard or island in the distance. We're now in the Tyrrhenian Sea, which is part of the Mediterranean. Continuing on, Bicicletta con Fiori. This photograph was exhibited at the Coral Gables Museum in my Coral Gables Mediterranean, Mediterranean Dream exposition. And what I like about this photo is that it could have been taken in South Florida. So I'm always looking for those connections between South Florida and Italy, France, also Israel and other countries in Europe. I took this photo in Southern Sicily in the town of Agrigento, which is famous for its Greek temples. I was staying at a bed and breakfast and that overlooked the temples and there it was. Some people, this photo, some people th feel that I have staged the photo, but I did not, this is exactly what I saw. I've included another Ciclo Matore. This was taken in Palermo. It's once again, the three-wheeled service truck. The title is Depinto. And I ran into a third generation cart painter in, or, or Coretto as it's called in Italian. The cart is a very symbolic object in Sicily. They are a symbol of Sicilian tr tradition and folklore. And what you have here in this Cic Ciclo Matore is a lot of Sicilian imagery. My last photograph of Italy, I'm gonna close with this portion of the presentation. This was taken in Sicily in the Northwest corner in the town of Milazzo, also on the Tyrrhenian Sea, which is part of the Mediterranean. And this is probably the most beautiful sunset that I've ever seen, a purple sunset. Clearly for me, color was the factor in this sunset photo. I'm now gonna continue, continue on to, show some photographs of from the United States. And I've decided tonight to show photographs from South Florida. Venetian pool was built in 1925, created in 1925. And clearly you can see the influence of the Venetian architecture. You might even think that you're in Venice I learned how to swim at Venetian pool. And you also have the nice, the texture of the coral rock and the wood beams. Continuing on in South Florida, buoys. This was taken in Coconut Grove. Uh, it's very tropical, lots of bright colors and you've got the textures of the, of the rope and the movement of the rope, as well as the red, the texture in the red wooden pole. These are two very popular places in Miami. And there's some similarities here and some differences. Yes, they're both on the water, on the left, Vizcaya, which is a um, inspired Venetian villa. And you see once again, the gondola poles and the gazebo in the distance. And you have on the right, the iconic Art Deco inspired South Florida, South Beach lifeguard stand taken on the Atlantic Ocean.
May and June in, in Miami and South Florida is a very special time for me because being someone who appreciates and loves color as much as I do, I always look forward to the blooming of the poinciana trees, which dot the South Florida area. You have in the background, the historic Biltmore Hotel, which was once on the chopping block to be demolished. It's been restored. Preservation is very important to me. And I've always thought of the Biltmore as the Eiffel Tower of Coral Gables. The last South Florida photo that I'm going to show, the title is Worth Avenue. This was taken in Palm Beach. And what I tried to do here was take a photograph that I might find in Europe. This easily could be found in the south of France or Portugal or Spain. What attracted me was the patterns of the beautiful tiles, the beautiful emerald and purple and blue and golden tiles on the staircase. And in this photograph, you also have umbrellas on the left-hand side, a theme that's very important to me. The next group of slides are going to be from three different countries and I'm gonna share one photo from each country. Morocco. The title of this photograph is Symphony de Couleur. This was taken on the Northwest corner of Morocco. It's of the fishing port and town Eswara. When I took this photo, I thought that I was on another planet. You've got in the foreground the fisher, the boats, the fishing boats, and in the background, the larger fishing boats. The, the repetition of the pattern and the color and light were all important elements. Portugal. This photograph was taken in Lisbon, and you have on the right the streetcar tracks. And uh, here you have a typical restaurant in the capital in Lisbon. And I, I was drawn to the color of the buildings on the left hand side, the pink and blue. And you all can also can see above the restaurant, the building, um, the washes on a cloth clothing line. The next country, Malta. This photograph was taken in the fishing village of Marshaslak, which is near the capital of Valletta. The, the name of these fishing boats are called Luzos and they're very, uh, they were very beautiful wooden structures with very bright, vibrant colors. I'm gonna close the presentation tonight and talk about Israel. I've been traveling to Israel since 1972. I have family there in Petak Tikva, which is outside of Tel Aviv. And for me, Israel keeps getting better and better and greener and greener. Most of the photographs that you're going to see in the next upcoming photos were taken at the Carmel Market in Tel Aviv or the Ben Yehuda Market in, in Jerusalem. The first two photos that you see here on the left, it's called Abundance and on the right, Colorful Spices. When you're visiting the markets the Carmel Market and also the Ben Yehuda in Jerusalem. It's a very, both places are very colorful with lots of animation, sights, sounds, scents, and perfumes. Talking about abundance on the, on the left, you have the uh, vivid color of the pomegranate and the patterning of the, in the, that you see in the pomegranate seeds and the oranges in the background 
on the right. Colorful spices. This was also taken at the Karma Market. You see here the different pots of the spices with the, the, the spices are very textural and they're also receding into the distance. Both of, both of these photos are equally vivid in their coloration. Continuing on, fruit landscape. This was taken in Jerusalem at the Ben Yehuda market. And for me, I, when I saw this dried fruit stand, it was for me like a landscape, a mountain of mango slices, apple slices, pineapple, pear slices. Uh, you've got apricots here as well as figs and dates. This photograph was taken in Tel Aviv with the olives and all different kinds of pickled vegetables. On the left, the title of the photograph is Shimmering, it was taken in Jerusalem where you have the brightly colored change purses and one of them has the Israeli flag. On the right side, this was taken at the Levinsky Market. Uh, the Lins Levinsky Market is located in the center of Tel Aviv in the Florentine neighborhood. It's a very old market. Uh, many of the shops there have been uh, in families and have gone from generation to generation. There are dried fruit and nuts stands and spice stalls. Uh, there are shops and also some restaurants and cafes. It's a very picturesque market. Something that I have found truly unique to Tel Aviv are the fruit stands. The way that they have been decorated and, and presented, I think that they, they are very special. Uh, there's you, any time, there's a, many different types of smoothies or fruit juices that you could have. On the left, the title of the photograph is the Garden of Eden. And you have on the right, the 100%, which I'm calling tantalizing. I really like the placement of the fruits and the organization in both of these stands. And I, I took the photographs because, because of the color. They're really something special. Continuing on, these photographs were taken in the port city of Jaffa. Jaffa is the oldest port in the world. It's right next to Tel Aviv and it's located on the Mediterranean. Uh, the part of Jaffa on the Mediterranean is up on a rocky promontory and uh, it has beautiful stone buildings. You can see an example of the stonework in the, on the photo on the left. And there are lots of galleries and restaurants. Jaffa, as I said, overlooks the Mediterranean and you have a view of Tel Aviv. The photograph on the right, also taken in Jaffa, uh, is an architectural detail of a doorway entrance. I'm going to close tonight's presentation with this photograph that I took at the entry entrance to the market in Tel Aviv. I really liked these colorful, crinkle-like, umbrella-like, and I think everyone tonight knows that I like taking photographs of umbrellas, usually, usually at the beach. Uh, so this was a different version of the umbrella for me. And once again, I said this was at the entrance of the Carmel Market in Tel Aviv, and I was drawn to the colorful, vivid colors 
and the exuberance of these forms. And also it's a happy photograph. And, as a, and I've mentioned that that's something very important to me. I hope that the people who are looking at the Zoom tonight will take a screenshot of my information. My presentation today will, will be on my website and also on Temple Beth Orr's website. My website consists of different galleries and each and the galleries are based on a particular subject matter. Some of the galleries I suggest that you look at would be the South Florida galleries, the two Israel galleries, Discover France one and two, Alice in Wonderland, La Porte del Paradiso, and Italia. As it says here on the slide, I, my photographs are printed on archival paper and canvas. I'm happy to be invited back by the Beth Thor Gallery of Light. And I also am selling my work in the Gallery of Light in the gallery at Beth Thor. I'd like to thank the following people from Beth Thor who helped me to put this presentation together. Marilyn Traeger, Enid Garber, Linda Faber, and Jen Burse. Thank you for all of your help with this presentation. I'd also like to thank the person who prints my photos, Mr. Espinosa. And I'd also like to thank my web designer who has created my website and the galleries on the website, Scott Tim. I really appreciate the opportunity that Beth Thor has given me to have this presentation this evening and would like to thank President Mel Tenen. And also, once again, I'd like to thank Rabbi Robin Fisher and Temple Beth Thor for giving me the opportunity to have this presentation. Thank you very much. Alice, you knocked it out of the park. Thank you, Marilyn. Oh, you're welcome. I want to um, give any of the opportunity to discuss some of the chats. I am so sorry to everybody about whoever that crazy person was who came in and thank everybody for their patience and thank Amy especially for solving our technical problems. Coming up next month on the 23rd is Social Justice Art with art therapist Leslie Ann and you can see one of her works behind her and she will be helping us discover social justice and also themes dealing with um, just what's going on <laughs> that we don't understand. We also wanna encourage you to go to the Gallery of Light shop. You can find Alice's work there and you can also find links to all of our artists' websites and see what they have in store for you. So I will stop the share and thank you, Alice. You did a great job, especially in the midst of chaos, which uh, as a teacher, you yes. know. Yes, <laughs> right? that's right. The show, the show must go on. Correct, thank you so much for your graciousness. <laughs> Fabulous job, Alice. Thank you, Enid. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Alice. It was wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Just, just some of the quick comments I will share. Um, Amy, who was supposed to go to Cassie this summer to um, go to a wedding, and she missed it. So I'm glad she had a chance to see a little bit of that beautiful port. Um, Lorraine says, such happy photos. Just fabulous, Alice. Thank you. Um, from Vaughn, beautiful. What type of camera are you using? I, I'm using a Canon Mark II. Okay. It's a digital um, camera. It, it, I'm also going to say it's it's a digital camera 
and it, it has a large it has a large frame format, which is similar to the um, the previous uh, um, film cameras. So that was very important to me. So when I'm looking, when I take my photos, I'm looking at the same framing that I was looking at when I was working in film. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see from Kathy, beautiful work, Alice. Uh, Linda Faber, stunning photos, Alice. Thank you for sharing your work. Um, Lorraine, again, thank you. Love traveling the world tonight. Um, from Anne, uh, wonderful, thank you. From Marcy, gave me ideas of where I'd like to go, especially Southern Italy. I love market photos too. Um, let's see, Marlene, Alice, thank you. Your photos are wonderful and so full of life. Adrian, lovely work. Linda again helped me wonder lust. Uh, Ronnie, I have many of Alice's cards and use them with my stamping. Just beautiful. Uh, Robert, thank you, Alice. Alice from Brett, if you had to pick, what's your favorite photo in the presentation and why? Okay, that's a, that's a real tough choice, <laughs> but I would probably have to say the purple sunset. That's probably my okay. favorite, but that could change tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and from Chantel, thank you, Alice. Amazing photos. From Marcy, I love Esoria, a treasure. I took pictures of the boats too. Very nice. That's it. So thank you everyone for your lovely feedback. Right, and we wanna, all of the gallery people want to, and the temple and Amy, El oh, yes. <laughs> wife, uh, we want to thank all of you for coming tonight and playing with us. And Alice, Alice we couldn't do it without you. You did a superb job and Alice, is a detailed girl. And I think you can tell by how much she knows about each place that she's visited and how willing she was to share all of that with us tonight. We're forever grateful, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Alice. Opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity.